Hello and welcome back to my 2D Left 4 Dead Unity tutorial thing. We're basically making a 2D clone of Left 4 Dead. Uh, today, you should go support me on Patreon. No, we're doing a fucking <laughs> level transitions and since that wasn't really enough content, I felt we also did doors. So we will go and do that shit. So I'm just going to pick up some items, even though they don't do anything. Uh, Uzi this time. All right, so here we have uh, fucking doors in the level, and you'll see that enemies will try and attack them, and they will eventually destroy them. And yeah, because that's what they do in Left 4 Dead. And also, uh, yeah. Let's keep going. You can also open them. Uh, press the wrong button. There we go. So keep walking. Keep walking. Oh yeah, so basically we've got doors that the infected can break down and we've also got safe room doors, which they can't, so you'll see one of those in a minute. I'll just spray and pray these guys, make sure they're all dead over here. And yeah, this will take a bit of a while to demo, but you'll get the point. And we've also got the little staircase here. And you'll see finally here we've got the final door into the safe room. And if we press Q, it shuts the door, and you'll see that this hang indicates that the level's loading. And just give it a second. Uh, yeah, now it's loaded the second level. And there's a bit more behind the scenes stuff, like, you know, working out, keeping all the stuff, because we've still got our guns and stuff. And we had to move the player to the starting room, so that's that. And if we just press Q, we can open the door and just like do this. Yeah. And we got some errors, yay. Oh well. But yeah, uh, I'll just show you how we did that. Okay, so first up, we're just going to do the door script. So basically, it's pretty simple. We have a door, uh, we've got a bully to say whether it's a safe room door, so safe room doors in Left 4 Dead can't be destroyed by infected, they can't get through, they just sort of like bang against them, hence why it's a safe room. Uh, so we've got a bully to say whether it's a safe room or not. Uh, we've got a bully to specify whether the door's open, and we've got two vector 3s to store the door's open rotation and the door's closed rotation. And we've also got an integer for health, so <coughs> pardon me. Uh, the door can survive like five hits before crumbling or getting destroyed. We don't have fancy animations here, that's for you to put in. Okay, so first up on Awake, we just uh, set the door open and close rotations. So the door close rotation is whatever rotation the door is at at the time of compiling while loading the level. And the door open rotation is that same, or the closed is the closed rotation with the z-axis increased by 90 degrees. Uh, I remember you have to use uh, Euler angles because that returns the rotation as a vector free rather than a quaternion because I don't know how to modify quaternion and I don't understand radians. So Euler angles for people like me and possibly you, if you understand radians, good for you. Okay, so once we've got those two values to define whether the door the doors open and close rotations, Basically, on update, we check if the door is not open, then we set the rotation to be quaternion.euler.close rotation. Uh, quaternion.euler, it just takes a vector free that replies, basically, it's just the x, y, and z of the rotation in, so like from 0 to 360 for each of the values, and that gives you the rotation. And otherwise, if door open is true, we do the same, but we do it for the door open rotation rather than door closed one. And finally, we call this open door method. Which basically goes through all the players. Uh, it will then check if the player is less than three units or three meters away from the door, and if they press Q as well as being less than three meters, then the door is either opened or closed based on what it was before. Uh, I know I will have to change this because uh, I'm planning to add like a split screen co-op to the game, so you can have like two people in the world, not like actual multiplayer, but you know, you get the idea. So I will have to change this in the future to like you know. Uh, and count for all the different 
well, different two different players inputting stuff. So you get what I mean. But that is a problem for another day. So right now that'll work. Next up, uh, we've got damage door. Uh, damage door, literally just uh, if it's not a safe room, then we decrease the health, and if the health is less than or equal to zero, we destroy the health, the uh, door. That is basically just called from infected behavior, which I will go over now. Okay, so infected behavior has had a few uh, adjustments basically to uh, count for the doors and working out whether a door is in our way, so they'd have to knock it down. So we've got a boolean here uh, for whether the infected has been blocked or not, and a game object to indicate the obstacle blocking said infected. So uh, let's see. In Left 4 Dead, infected, they can uh, break through doors, climb over walls, shit like that. So, the, well, the player like can't climb over walls, but well, they can destroy doors. So yeah, they can do certain things that the player can't do when there's an obstacle in the way. So this object is basically going to store that obstacle, and based on the obstacle encountered, we'll perform an action. So in this case, I've just got doors. So uh, we call... Where is it? Down here somewhere. So sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I fucked that up. Sorry. Uh, so first off, we call this our obstacle detect method in update. This I should have just right clicked, but whatever. Uh, obstacle detect basically fires a raycast in front of the play uh, the that in particular infected for like two point five meters, and it uh, has got this layer ma layers minus infected that we used previously for when detecting the player. Uh, it's basically a layer mask that will hit all objects in the scene that aren't on the infected layer. So anything but a zombie. And just we've got a debug here to draw the ray so we can see it in the uh, editor. Uh, if we don't hit anything, then the we're basically good. There's no object blocking us, so we can keep going. Otherwise, we've just debug what the, we actually hit. And if the ray dot collider is door, then we can set block to true. And obstacle is in the ray is the object we the raycast hit. Okay, so we go back to the update function. So say we found a door in this obstacle detect, and if the infected alert is false, then we don't do anything because the infected isn't moving. But at the same time, if we are detected, so say if the player fired a shot, but there was a door between the infected and the player, then we go through all this, so we'd say, all right, there's no uh, line of sight for the target, so we get a path to the target, so they'd be following that path, and uh-oh, here's the door. So first off, since block to be true, we don't do that. Instead, we call this deal with the obstacle method, and we go to that. Uh, and basically, what this is, is functionally identical to the actual attack method. What this does, it just plays the attack animation, counts down the attack timer, and when the attack timer is less than or equal to zero, we call it, say, attacking is false. If the obstacle's null, so if it got destroyed on the last pass, then we set block to false and return. Otherwise, if the obstacle has a door script on it, we call damage door, and then set attacking to false again for some reason, which I will get rid of there. And then we set the animation controller dot set ball attacking to false, so it stops playing the attack animation. And finally, we set attack timer to 1.0 to like reset it. And that's how the uh, they do all the doors. That's fairly simple. Uh, we could add stuff like say if say if we like encountered a fence, we'd want to uh, oh what's the word? Oh, words are failing me today. Sorry. Uh, if we encountered a fence, maybe we'd want to slow the movement speed of the infected and play some kind of clambering animation. Uh, if we encountered deep water, like you know they have in uh, Swamp Fever or High at Hard Rain in Left 4 Dead 2, we'd uh, just decrease the uh, the actual speed of the infected. What else can the infected do? Uh, maybe just like a car or something, again, would be just clambering. Uh, what else? Well, that's pretty much it for the things I can think of, so we'll just keep going. So that'll probably come up again if we do, impl well, we will be implementing stuff like having locations that are inaccessible to the player, but allow us to like spawn infected, but hidden away from the actual view of the camera, so it doesn't break immersion. Uh, and next up, we have our safe room script. And I shouldn't be doing two scripts in one, but whatever, YOLO. So first off, we have a string, which is our level to load, which is a, well, 
the level to load after the safe room. Uh, I've also got a door script to basically stand for our safe room door. Because, uh, you know, in Left 4 Dead, all the survivors have to be within the safe room and then the door has to be closed in order to progress to the next level. So that's what that's there for. And we have a box collider to mark out the area of the safe room, which we use in a minute. So basically, on the update function of the uh, safe room, basically what we do is, if the level is done, it's equal to true. We debug that it's done, we don't need that. Um, we call the load next, load next level method. So is level done? Basically what we do is, if the safe room door is not open, so we make sure that the safe room door is closed first, uh, we then use physics2d.overlapboxall, which basically uh, basically it draws a box from a point, like using colliders, and we'll get all the uh, objects with colliders in that box and return them. So this gives us an array of all the things inside the safe room. And that takes in this top transform dot position and my collider dot size. Whereas technically it's not using the uh, actual collider, the box collider that has on, ob has on the object. It's quite useful for when we're trying to visualize what the actual safe room looks like. So if I just go to the safe room here, uh, we'll see that if I can I make it any bigger. Yeah, you can see that we can edit the, the safe room here. So we could edit it to, be, it to be like that big or that big or whatever. Yeah. And that physics 2D dot overlap box all will be the same size as that square, the collider, basically. And we've also got that set to us is trigger, so we don't actually collide with it, you know. Okay. Uh, and then what we do, we go through each of these colliders that have been found inside the safe room. I uh, can get rid of the debug. And what we do, actually, no, we don't go through all of them, sorry. We go through all the players in the world, and we get the collider. And then we go through all the colliders that we found in the uh, in the safe room. And if we find the player's collider in the safe room list, or list of colliders in the safe room, then we just set found in rooms true. So say if there was a player outside the safe room and one player was in the safe room and they closed it, we'd then set, uh, we'd still be like at false. Or it would be like, we'd find the uh, that the player isn't in the colliders found in the safe room, so found in room would still be false. So in this case, it would return false. But otherwise, if we can go through all the players without it not finding a collider for the player in the safe room, we'll then return true. And finally, if the door is open, then we just return false, because obviously the level isn't done. And for load next level, uh, what we do is we go through all the players, we set them to not be destroyed on each lo on load. Uh, this basically makes sure that the once we change scenes, the player game objects will still be there. Uh, that is basically because it's an easier way than like serializing all the data of the items, what they got, and stuff like that. So I'm just going to do that. And then we finally use scene manager load scene and level to load. And remember, you need to import Unity Engine scene management to use scene manager. Okay, so next we'll be uh, just quickly demoing how we set the starting positions of the level. So in this uh, thing, thing level in the level, we have a script called the start room, which basically just uh, has a static variable called start for level. And on awake, we set start for level equal to this. And on the start method, uh, when start is called, sorry, we go through each of the players in playermonitor.me.players and we set the player's position to be equal to the position for start room. So even when we're calling, like, uh, basically this is needed because when we're transitioning to the next level, uh, the players, since uh, the players aren't destroyed on the level loading, uh, the players will be in like a, the same coordinates as they were in the previous level. But that might not correspond to the safe room of the next level. So what we do is we just have this script and it moves the uh, players to that position that they should start at. And then we also call the uh, get component uh, player weapon controller dot on scene load, 
which I don't allow. Uh, basically, this just recalls the start function, so it gets person animation controller, but mainly it was because we needed this to find objects of type weapon, because obviously the weapons that were on the floor in the old episode, a massive fuck off bug has just crawled across the screen. Uh, the weapons found in the previous level won't be found in the next level and vice versa, so we need to refresh that list. So that is basically why we call this unseen load that we call start. Uh, and finally, we also have a check here because at the same time when our when we load a new level, the uh, camera won't be assigned to the player to follow it. So basically, we just do a check. If the object to follow is null, then we just find a game object with a tag player. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, uh, that was pretty much it for the level. Uh, this week we did uh, safe rooms and level transitions and doors. Uh, yeah, uh, what are we, we going to do next week? I'm pretty sure I've just gone off the rails from the plan, but whatever. Uh, what can we do next week? I think I'll do like a, I'll work on like a uh, horde events. Actually, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. So next week we're going to do horde events, and we'll have like a finale level or something. If it doesn't take too much to do the horde events. So yeah. So cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Go check out all the links in the description for various things that I have done. Like uh, Lava Quiet, uh, other tutorial series like the RTS one, the RPG, Hotline Miami, Clone, etc., etc. And yeah, cheers for watching and goodbye.